So I was having some trouble coming up with a video idea for this week. And then it hit me. Ideas. I realized I could talk about ideas and in all likelihood stretch that out to at least the length of one of these videos. Specifically, I want to confront a couple of truths about ideas that you may or may not have already heard. First, that there are no good or bad ideas, and second, that every idea out there has already been done. You will hear a lot of people argue about the quality of a given idea, and also a lot of people argue that ideas themselves don't have any inherent quality, and it is the execution of an idea alone that determines the quality of a story. And I think both groups are right in their own way, although one of those groups I think is quite a bit more right. There are certain ideas that when presented sound more exciting and interesting. These are the ideas that make people ooh and ah. These ideas are usually some kind of a subversion of a common story trope, or perhaps a combination of different smaller ideas that when put together make something interesting. Keep that last point in mind as we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. You can also come up with ideas that aren't very interesting or seem like they would lend themselves to creating unsatisfying stories. This is the basis of the ideas matter argument that you can evaluate a story just on the idea itself. The counter argument to that, which I tend to believe is more true, is that good execution determines the quality of a story and will offset any perceived weakness in the idea itself. You can, after all, take what might be considered a good idea and botch it through poor execution if you don't know what you're doing. You can also take what may appear to be an unsatisfying idea and turn it into a great story through good execution. That said, I think it is true that certain ideas will take less skill to turn into an interesting story than some other ideas. Bearing in mind, of course, that taking even a good idea and executing it well requires a massive amount of skill and time, so it by no means makes things easy, just easier. But you will likely have a better chance of making a good story if you start with an idea that you yourself find compelling and interesting. That's what really should be the driver for deciding whether or not to pursue a given idea, whether or not you find it compelling and interesting. After all, if you yourself are not invested in an idea, then your execution of it is likely to not be that great. Now let's talk about originality. There is a I would say common fear among a lot of new writers, and I've at times experienced this, that you shouldn't work on an idea if you've seen someone else do something similar already. I've also found that you can generally ignore those feelings. Now you definitely want to avoid making a carbon copy of another story, and usually it's pretty clear if you're going down that road. You also have to be careful that you're not being too derivative of an existing story. But at the same time, trying to do something completely original is almost impossible. If you spend some time around stories, you will notice that a lot of them can be boiled down to the same two or three sentence summary and there's a good reason for that. A good analogy here is music. Technically, you can mash any number of notes together in any sequence and call it a song. But the combinations that actually sound good together and produce music that people want to listen to are quite limited. And they also vary from culture to culture and time period to time period. The same thing can be said of stories. You can mash together any combination of scenes and plot points, but only a small percentage of those are going to lead to satisfying stories. Now, even within that small percentage, there are probably millions and millions of combinations that work, but the fact that so many stories and even genres can be boiled down to the same few points shows how finite that number actually is. Stories work because they trigger a certain emotional response in the reader. The number of ways to trigger these satisfying emotional responses is limited, which means only certain types of stories are going to be effective in this way. Over the course of time that people have been telling stories, we've managed to figure out all of the ways to do this, but that fact doesn't mean that your story doesn't have merit. Even though a reader may have experienced a certain emotional response to a story in the past, having that same emotional response from a new story can still be a satisfying experience. You can still write something like a mystery or a romance, even though those plots have all been done millions of times before, 
and no one will call you a hack, and if it's a well-written story, people will still enjoy it, even though it's not original. Instead of the originality of the idea, what you should be focusing on is taking the idea and applying your own voice and interpretation to it. This is why so many plots and stories that have been repeated so many times are still satisfying. It's because each author presents the ideas in their own way and lets their individual voice come through. So again, it comes back to the execution of the ideas and not the ideas themselves. You may or may not be noticing a theme here. You may also have noticed that I keep saying ideas, meaning more than one idea. That's also important. One of the things that happened to me when I first started writing was I would consistently run out of material for a story before I had something that was the length of a novel. Now, I am a card-carrying underwriter and could probably cram an entire trilogy spanning 3,000 years into under 50k words if I wanted to, and in the end it would probably still come out around 45k. But my fear of long sentences and propensity to create non-talkative characters was only part of the problem. The real problem was I was trying to write a novel around a singular idea rather than a collection of ideas. You see, a novel is a long thing, and stretching one idea out over the length of a novel is tricky. Most stories will have a central idea that spans the narrative, and this is usually what gets worked into the pitch for the book, but alongside that central idea are usually at least two or three other ideas. These other ideas could be subplots, they could be related to the setting or the characters, doesn't really matter. What matters is you need a few of them if you want to put a novel together. Besides the problem with length of the story, a novel based around a singular idea can also be less interesting. The story can end up being one note if it's focused on one idea, and it will seem like it's lacking depth. By focusing on one idea, you also give up the power that using multiple ideas can bring you. A lot of great stories arise out of the combinations of different unexpected ideas. Taking a familiar story structure like a mystery and putting it in a strange or bizarre setting, or putting characters in the story that aren't normally associated with a mystery, is an example of taking familiar concepts and creating something interesting and novel, which you then use to create a novel out of. I wonder if that's why they call them that. As we discussed earlier, there's not a lot of opportunity to do something completely new but there is a lot of opportunities to combine different things like settings and characters in ways that haven't been done before. This, along with good execution, is a way that you can take familiar, previously used story structures and adapt them into something new that people will find interesting. So remember, focus on the execution of an idea rather than the idea itself, but make sure that you do find the actual idea interesting and compelling. You don't need to come up with something original, and in most cases shouldn't, but always look for opportunities to put your own spin or perspective on an idea. And don't discount the power of combining multiple ideas, as you may end up with something that's greater than the sum of its parts. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice videos and subscribe to my channel. I post new writing advice related videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.